although I'd imagine that there's certainly going to be an agreement, at least in principle, that they will do so, the issue here will be as to whether these 160,000 uh, slots or spots are going to be mandatory or whether they're going to be voluntary. Clearly, the Commission, Germany, France, etc., you know, wish for this to be mandatory, but they have quite a bit of fierce opposition by the on the on on the part of many member states, particularly Eastern European member states. This is going to be an example or a test as to the political leadership of Frau Merkel, but also President Hollande. Do you see this as a positive step forward for how the EU is dealing with the crisis, or do you think it's too little too late? Well, it is certainly a too little too late, because those numbers will be very small by the time they're agreed to, relative to the number of people who have been coming in every day and every week to Germany and elsewhere. But on the principle that this is a beginning and that these numbers are more realistic than the 40,000 that the Commission was proposing a mere three or four months ago, this is progress. But this is not going to be the only thing that the Europeans will have to do. They also will have to stop these chaotic situations, these pictures showing hundreds of people, thousands of people trying to make it into buses and trains in order to make it to their next destination. Europe must find a way to have a much more orderly way in which to receive people and to adjudicate or at least process their initial claims. Well, that, that sort of orderly fashion that you're talking about, it could be very difficult. I mean, Western states led by Germany and uh, Eastern states uh, like, like Hungary and Poland, uh, you've mentioned them, uh, have very different opinions on how to cope with the crisis. How might a mandatory quota system ease this standoff exactly? Would, would this not potentially just uh, fuel a, a sort of an even more tense situation? Well, it probably could, but I think what we need to understand here is that this is a political process in which the Europeans are engaged. That means that everything can change on the basis of what the incentives will be. So I do not know what private and what public promises the European Commission and the big players, Germany in particular, will be making to their Eastern European um, um, uh, leaders, but the fact remains that at the end of the day, the pressure is going to be extraordinary for these leaders to yield, at least in principle, at least for small numbers initially, that then can create opportunities to expand these numbers. This is a difficult issue. No one can impose their will on anybody else within the European Union. And we're going to have to wait and see whether the incentives, what right. gets put on the table, will right. be able to persuade some of the Euro Eastern Europeans and break this alliance that includes the Czech Republic and Slovakia right. and Poland and all these other places. OK, well, certainly the public pressure does seem to be there at the moment. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for that. Dimitrio Papa uh, Dimitrio speaking to us there.